Bill, what have we got here? Is the iPad really going to change your life? Enough of that guy already. Hello, everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. In our previous video on the iPad, we kind of beat up on it, and well, on second thought, maybe we ought to give it another chance and see if we can leave it for dead this time. So in this video, we're going to compare the iPad to the Garmin GPS Map 696, mainly for cockpit use, but well, really for everything else too. Let's start with the price. A top-of-the-line iPad with 3G costs 829 bucks, plus $30 a month for the 3G. That's with no accessories and no apps. The 696 sells for $29.99 discounted, including a box full of accessories and an XM receiver. You also get a yoke mount and various chargers. The iPad doesn't have this capability. It might someday. We'll just have to see. Okay, on to the basic uh, display. This is where the iPad shines. Its overall size is 5.8 by 7.7 compared to 3.6 by 6.0 for the 696. But that's only part of the story. The resolution on the iPad is 1024 by 768 compared to 480 by 800, so the iPad wins on screen sharpness and size. But that's only part of the picture, too, because the price to be paid is glare. It's so glaring, in fact, that we can't even shoot it in the cockpit in a way to do justice to what the iPad is really good at, a plate reader. Several apps offer this. They're inexpensive, and they work well. The plates are scalable and geo-referenced in some apps. The 696 has plates, too. They're just as easy to access, and they're geo-referenced. But because of the smaller screen, they're not as easy to read or scale. Score another one for the iPad. Let's take a closer look at the navigation display screens. As you can see, the 696 is as detailed with a lot of useful nav data, and all of these fields can be customized. It's a very strong display. The 696 also has Garmin's flight panel page, and I know it's good enough to keep you upright in the clouds because I've tried it. That's not to say the iPad can't do nearly as well. This app is called iHUD, and it uses the iPad's accelerometer and GPS to display a detailed EFA screen. It's a little twitchy, but it works pretty well. The little disclaimer at the bottom of the screen warns you not to use this in flight, but us real pilots know that such warnings are just for the little people. The iPad is credible as a navigator. Maybe not great, but it can still get the job done. As you can see here, whoops, wrong slide, sorry about that. This is the Wing X Pro moving map. This is probably the most advanced map out there. You can set up the screen in a tile format with the map in one window and other data in these other sections. This app is organized by phase of flight from takeoff through cruise to approach. But it doesn't list approaches by name like the 696 does, and it doesn't have the same level of navigation data detail. Where the iPad really sucks winds for airborne weather data. With the XM receiver, the 696 gets near real-time NEXRAD and a lot of other weather data, and it displays this right on the screen. That's a big deal if you fly a lot of weather. The iPad doesn't compete here. It can usually access weather through the 3G connection while airborne, but not always. And even then, its weather imagery is static and limited compared to the 696, and you often have to step through another app or another function to get at it. Unfortunately, it kind of goes downhill from there. The iPad is a so-so moving map, but it lacks some of the basic nav capabilities that 696 has. The apps can be a little bit quirky at times, and the GPS, although it's relatively reliable, tends to lose lock, especially when you exit apps. It probably works 90% of the time. On the other hand, the 696 never goes brain dead, at least that we've seen. So the big question is, can the iPad replace the GPS Map 696? Well, you can decide for yourself, but my view is that it can't. The GPS is just a little bit too tender, and the in-flight weather gathering is just too weak. But here's an idea. The iPad really does do a lot of things pretty well. It's an excellent plate reader, and it has a lot of in-flight utilities. So you could take a look at Garmin's GPS Era 510, as your weather gatherer and primary navigator and use that in combination with the iPad as a plate reader. You'd have the best plate reader option out there and you'd save yourself about 800 bucks. That's something to think about. You can read a full report on the iPad versus the 696 in the October 2010 issue of Aviation Consumer. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching. <laughs>